All right, we're going to get into 2.5 today. Um, so here is the bell work. Um, this bell work is over the um, over the average rate of change. So go ahead and pause and see if you can answer these questions. Okay, so as we're looking at this, two two speed skaters A and B um, are racing in a 500 meter event. The graph shows the distance they have traveled as a function of time um, from when they started the, and ended the race. So here we can see distance, here we can see time. Um, so they're both traveling 500 meters and this is the time it takes them. Um, so for example, um, at 10 seconds, uh, B is at 100, but A is at 200 meters. Okay, so who won the race? Well, that would be the person that went 500 in the shortest amount of time, which would be uh, racer or skater B. Find the average speed during the first 10 seconds for each skater. Okay, the average speed is the average rate of change. So we're looking from here to here and here. So we're finding the slope between those two points. Okay, so for skater A, I'll come down here and do B. Now let's go down a little bit further. So for skater A, your change in Y would be um, 200 minus zero okay and then your x direction would be 10 minus zero so that's 200 over 10 which is 20 um i think it's in meters per second okay for racer b they only went 100, so it'd be 100 minus 0 over 10 minus 0, which is 100 over 10, which is 10 meters per second. Okay, so racer A in that interval or in that distance, that time, was going faster. And we can see that by the slope. Uh, find the average speed during the last 15 seconds. Okay, so 5, 10, 15, so kind of from here forward. So we have this point for skater A and this point, and this point for skater B and this point. Now, by just looking at this, we can see that B is going faster, okay, because it's going to have a steeper slope. So A, um, if we look at this point, this is, let's see, 10, 20, 30, 40, 500. And this point is 10, 25, 400. So that's 500 minus 400 over 40 minus 25. So that's 100. over 15 which reduces to 20 over 3 and then skater B this one was 35 500 and this is uh, 25 one two fifty so then we have five hundred minus two fifty over thirty five minus twenty five so that's two fifty over ten which is twenty five over one okay so this one has a much steeper slope than the other one Oop. Okay, today we're talking about linear functions. So we're going back a lesson here. 
um, to linear functions and models. So create and use linear models. Now linear, let's remember here, linear models are in the form y equals mx plus b. m is our slope. And since it's a line, it's the average rate of, sorry, not average. It is the rate of change, which is the same as average rate of change. But because it's linear, it's a constant rate of change. It's not an average. Um, B is your y-intercept. Uh, it is often in models, it is your starting point. Okay, so at time zero or um, wherever you start, that's what B was. So it's an X value of zero and some Y value. Determine whether the given function is linear. If the function is linear, express the function in the form F of X equals ax plus b so that's just y equals mx plus b okay here this one is a function but we need to rearrange it f of x equals 3x plus 2 so you have a slope of 3 over 1 and a y-intercept of 2. here let's go ahead and distribute this so we have g of x equals minus 6x plus three, I went ahead and rearranged it. Now we have a negative slope of negative six over one and a y-intercept of three. Okay, here we're gonna go ahead and distribute the x. So we have h of x equals, um, we have four x plus three x squared. Now this one is not linear because I have this x squared. This is actually a quadratic, so it is not linear. Meaning it doesn't have a constant rate of change. That parabola or that quadratic, we would have to find the average rate of change between some intervals. Now this one's a little bit tricky. I can rewrite this as negative five over four x plus one fourth. Okay, and this is linear. I have a slope of negative 5 over 4 and a y-intercept of 1, 4. So don't let the fraction part mess you up. The only uh, way this would not be linear is if there was a variable down here on bottom or if I had, oh, excuse me, if I had an x squared or square root of x on the top. Okay, let f be... Let f be the linear function defined by this. Make a table of values and sketch the graph. Okay, so they want us to make a table of values. So we're just going to pick some x values here. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter what x values you pick. So we're just going to pick negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Those are numbers I try to pick all the time. Uh, even with other functions as well. So when I take this and plug it in, I get 3 times negative 2 plus 2, which is minus 4. I get negative 3, or 3 times negative 1 plus 2, which is negative 1. I get 0 times 3 plus 2, which is 2. I get 3 times 1 plus 2, which is 5. And I get 3 times 2 plus 2, which is 8. So as you can see here, we're, it's a constant going up by 3, okay? And that matches with our slope here. It's a constant rate of change. So when we go to graph this, you can graph these ordered pairs if you want, or you can kind of do what you did in Algebra 1 class, and that is start with the y-intercept, which is at 3, You uh, sorry, which is at 2, And then use your slope of three, uh, go up three, one, two, three, and go right one, or you can go down three, one, two, three, and left one. And then you have that line right there. What is the slope of the graph? The slope is three over one. 
Um, I get that from this equation. Uh, you could also get it from the formula change of y over change of x. And you have different value. You have different uh, coordinates here that you can use. Because it's a constant rate of change, you can use any two, um, any two ordered pairs in that one. A dam is built on a river to create a reservoir. The water level f of t in the reservoir at a time is given by this function, where t is the number of years since a dam was constructed, and f of t is the measure is the measured in feet or is measured in feet. So sketch a graph. Okay, so we have this graph. I'm going to go by tens. We'll go by tens in the um, y direction, but we can go by ones in the x direction. Just if you do that, make sure you label so we can tell. Okay, so we start at 28, so 10, 20, 28 here. And my slope is 4.5, so that's 45 over 10. So we can go down 45, so there's 10, 20, 30, 40, 5. Okay, uh, that's 28 minus 45 is negative 17. So we should be about negative 17 somewhere. Um, and then we could go uh, left 10, which is kind of way off my graph. Uh, you could also go up 4.5 um, or down 4.5 and left 1. So this was 28, 4.5 would be like right here, and then one. So it's got a very, it's not very steep. Okay, this line, not very steep. Uh, what is the slope of the graph? We just did that. That's 45 over 10. Um, we don't want to really put like decimals in fraction form, but you could say that the slope is 4.5 as well. At what rate is the water level in the reservoir changing? Um, well, that rate is is your slope. That is the slope. So it is uh, 4.5 uh, feet per year. Okay, that the slope is your rate of change. Water is being pumped into a swimming pool at the rate of five gallons per minute. The initially the pool contains 200 gallons of water. Find a linear function V that models the volume of water in the pool at time T. So V of T, so that's the volume Okay, so we have, we're filling this pool and we want it in y equals mx plus b. Okay, so our slope or our rate of change is five. It's five gallons per minute. So this becomes five, but it initially at time zero started with 200. So this initial part is 200. So you have five x or five, it'd actually be five t in this case plus 200. If the pool has a capacity of 600 gallons, how long does it take to completely fill the, fill the pool? So your volume is going to be 600, 5t plus 200. So you're going to subtract the 200, 400 equals 5t, divide by 5, and t equals... eighty. So it's going to take 80 minutes to fill this pool. You got to come back up here and look at your label for the correct label. So 80 minutes to fill this tape, uh, fill this pool. Okay. Slope of a staircase. Find a linear function H that models the height of the trim board uh, above the floor. 
So we have h of x equals. Now this red line is kind of, we're finding the equation of that. So we're given two points here. So we need to find the slope of those points. So remember, slope is change of y over change of x. So 32 minus 16 over 36 minus 12. So 32 minus 16 is 16. Uh, 36 minus 12 is 24. And if I reduce that, you get two thirds. So your slope is two thirds. That means you're going up two and right three. Okay, so for every two inches up, you're going three inches deep. So two thirds X plus, and we have to look at where we initially started, which was eight. It says, if the space available to build the staircase is 10 feet wide, how long or how high does a staircase need to reach? Um, so that 10 feet, or sorry, 11 feet um, is this measurement right here. But that's in feet, this is in inches. So 11 feet, um, I have to take that times 12 inches to get inches. So 11 times 12 is 132 inches. So I need to find H of 132. So you plug in 132 and you can just use a calculator for this. Two thirds times 132 plus eight. So 96 inches or eight feet. So it needs to go eight feet high, this staircase, because uh, we're going to continue that line. That constant rate of change keeps going up because um, we stopped at 60 and we need to go to 132 inches. Okay, last one here, um, and then you'll have some homework on WebAssign. So John and Mary are driving westward along I-76 at, constant, at constant speeds. The graphs in figure five show the distance y in miles that they have traveled from Philadelphia at time x in hours, where x equals zero corresponds to noon. Uh, note uh, that at noon, John had already traveled 150 miles. Okay, so Mary started at noon. John was already going. At what speeds are John and Mary traveling? Who's traveling faster? And how does this show up on the graph? Okay, so looking at it, we know that Mary is traveling faster because she has a steeper slope. Okay, her slope is closer to one. Um, we can say it that way, slope. Okay, so let's find the slope here. So John's slope, I'll just write it right here under John. So John, and we can, we don't have to use the two points that they give us. We can start here and note that it goes up 50 and over one to this point right here. Now, you have to be careful with that because if this point actually isn't one 200, then you're gonna be wrong which is why they give us dots here to use. Um, so like on the ACT, if, if you get something that's not an answer, then you need to come back and use the dots. So if we do use the dots, this is, John is at 4,350. And this point is at 2,250. Okay, so if we subtract, that's 100 over two, which is 50 over one. Okay, so 50 over one. Mary is at four, 
Let's see, four, 300, and two, 150. So that would be 150 over two, which is 75. Okay, so we said that closer to one or 100, um, her slope is steeper. It's a larger number, um, so she's traveling much faster. Okay, so you could say slope is larger. Okay, find functions that model the distance that John and Mary have traveled as functions of x. So we're going to say John's equation, j of x equals 50x plus 150, because he was he started at 150. But Mary's equation, m of x equals 75x uh, plus 0, but I don't have to put plus 0. So those are their two equations. How far will John and Mary have traveled at 5 p.m.? Well, remember noon is zero, so this is one, two, three, four, five. So all I have to do is plug five in. So we want John at five, which if we just plug that in, he's at 400. And Mary of five, she's at 375. Okay, so getting closer and closer and closer. You can kind of see that they're going to intersect. Uh, they started 150, and this distance gets narrower and narrower and narrower. For what time period is Mary behind John? Uh, will Mary overtake John? If so, at what time? Okay, we just kind of talked about that. So in order to find where they intersect, we need to set the two equations equal. So 50x plus 150 equals 75x. So 1, 150 equals 25x. So x equals 6. So at 6 p.m., um, so before 6, so noon, whoop, noon to 6 p.m., uh, Mary is behind John. From 6 p.m. on, John is behind Mary. Okay, so at that time, they... They are equal at that time, but before that, it's one way, and after that, it's the other way. So that's kind of their changing point, all right? Um, so that is 2.5. You have a lesson on WebAssign that you can start and submit. Don't forget to submit those onto Schoology as well.